Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in. My name is Sebastian, and I work at Medusa, which is a project that I'm super excited to be speaking uh, to you about today. In this talk, I'll be going over how our abstraction-based architecture benefits developers when working on e-commerce projects. And for those of you who don't know, Medusa is an open source headless commerce engine. And we've built this project for developers to make their lives easier, to make them more powerful, and ultimately make them capable of creating amazing digital commerce experience for merchants and their customers. Um, in today's talk, I'll go over first why we built Medusa and the origin story of the project. I'll also be talking about the many different functionalities that go into enabling digital commerce. And I can mention now, there are quite a few of those. And finally, I'll be giving you a brief intro to how we've managed to create a plugin architecture that tames all of these functionalities and orchestrates them to work for you um, through this plugin architecture. So let's jump straight to the first point on the agenda. And let me give you a bit of background uh, as to why we built Medusa. So before working on Medusa, we were running the small agency that we'd set up uh, while studying in university to make some extra cash. And we took on all kinds of tasks, but slowly we began specializing within e-commerce. And the clients, these e-commerce clients that we had, they wanted to accomplish things like setting up their first store, doing small customizations on a website, uh, expanding into new markets. We also had a fair share of replatforming projects where a client was moving from one tool in their stack uh, to a different tool. Um, and one thing that we often found ourselves a bit puzzled about was this fact that the existing solutions, and these solutions are some of the biggest e-commerce platforms in the world, they would sometimes recommend that in order to solve a problem, you'd have to do something that just seemed very hacky. Um, these are things like associating Shopify products based on string patterns in a URL slug, because there are no other taxonomies that, that make this possible, or this, this association possible. It could also be things like digging your way through WooCommerce hooks to figure out where to add an extra field in, in order to make sure that you're not breaking the entire plug, the, the already configured plugins. And you know, when writing this code, we would be cringing uh, because we knew that it would benefit the client in the short run, yeah. But over time, we had to maintain this feature we'd just be much worse off. A key reason for why the existing platforms are hard to work with for developers, and as such also constrains what merchants can do, is that they're very monolithic in nature. Uh, the monolithic approach makes it possible to closely integrate many different features into a single platform, which makes it fairly easy to get started on the platform. However, what we've seen over the past couple of years is that there's strong APIs that have been created within each area of uh, the e-commerce stack. And this has created a, a need for a much more fragmented uh, e-commerce stack in order to, to operate at the higher levels. Um, this, this need for fragmentation has made it, it's, it's very hard for the monolithic systems to deal with because Whenever you have to change something in a monolithic system, you have to keep the entire system in mind and, and know at all times how things are, are working with each other. Ultimately, this means that you're very limited to a small uh, range of APIs that you can work with. And at the same time, you also find yourself in situations where monoliths have to take, make opinionated implementations that you just simply cannot control through APIs or other tools. And this can be things like how uh, rounding rules work. Um, and sometimes you are able to hack your way around those limitations, but in other cases, you're simply left with the scenario where you can't use the system because this opinionated implementation is a, is a limitation to making the two systems work together. Um, finally, of course, the, the monoliths are ultimately interested in keeping as much functionality on their platform. Um, and in that sense, you're sort of misaligned when it comes to finding the best stack to work with for a merchant or developer at any given point. 
So what we did when we started working on Medusa was we worked in very close collaboration with a customer, Tecla Fabrics, um, who wanted to build a, go on to a bespoke solution. And they had a clear ambition of becoming a global brand that gave us some pretty big requirements to accommodate. Most importantly, we knew that we'd have to be able to adapt things quickly, both to, due to the many different markets that, they, uh, that we had to support, but also because Tecla, with the growth that they were seeing, had ever-changing needs. The initial take was to focus on small, small modules that could be mixed through abstractions. What we found through this was that our lives became a lot easier as developers, as we could now focus on working on simple units instead of having to consider the entire effect on the system when doing a modification. It obviously made us more, more happy. It made us more powerful. And, but, but most importantly, it also helped Tecla scale to more than 50 markets across the world uh, while being able to offer always the best payment and shipping provider in each of those markets. While Tecla moved to, to Medusa, they saw an uplift in their conversion rate of up to 70%. And we actually also managed in this time period of working with them to switch ERP providers in less than half the time that similar projects usually take. So after iterating a couple of times on the early version, we were able to sort of identify what the key principles are for how we design our architecture. We still follow these principles today. They're listed here. And the first one is that developers must be able to control everything. This is also why we decided to open source Medusa because at this point, you're able to really control every single line of code. The next principle is that when building functionality, we try to abstract things to primitives so that things remain as modular as possible. Sometimes, of course, we're forced to do implementations that become opinionated. And when this, when this happens, we move that implementation into what we call strategies, which are units of logic that can be overridden and customized. So you literally always have control of the entire system. The final key principle is that we don't implement, implement functionality that other solutions are better at providing. For example, we never implement CMS functionality because there is a much better tool out there in Strapi. So we'd much rather create a great abstraction for CMS and make sure that you can work with Strapi easily. Okay, let's now take a look at some of these functionalities that are relevant for digital commerce. As I mentioned in the beginning of the talk, there are quite a few of them, so bear with me. If we, look, if we take a look at this slide, you see the average e-commerce store needs at least a website, some content, a place to manage this content, product management functionality, order management, some sort of shipping module, the ability to take payments. And if you start adding a bit more complexity to your store, this spectrum only becomes wider. Now, if we go ahead and dig a bit deeper into each of these categories, you'll find that yes, the monolithic solutions have an implementation that gives you aspects of this category, but there are also a whole category of companies who specialize in only that piece of functionality. If you take an area like, search, an area like search, you have companies like Algolia, Elastic, TypeSense, Millisearch, and many more. And when an e-commerce project grow, grows, their needs, uh, the, the needs of the projects also change. And this is especially true uh, of the needs of the different functionalities. So it's not, it's not just the entire platform, it's each of these different functionalities where uh, needs are changing. And this is what makes Medusa's architecture so powerful. Because at this point, when you have good abstractions, Medusa becomes the glue that holds all these services together and orchestrates them to work for you. So for example, let's take the case where you have a customer that has ordered a wrong size and they want to make an exchange. This is possible in Medusa and the exchange consists of creating a return label that we'll call a shipping provider, then accounting for the credit that we'll call a accounting plugin. 
creating a new shipment, well, again, called a shipping provider, and accounting for the sale, again, the accounting provider. Furthermore, the customer has to be notified, so there has to be some sort of email system set up. Um, and there might also be a need for taking an additional payment through any payment provider that might be configured. And as you can see, there are many parts that go into this seemingly simple operation. Um, and what we do with Medusa's abstractions is that we allow you to pick and choose any parts of the stack. And in, in that way, you can change providers without having to think about how it's going to fit into these existing flows. What's more powerful is that when you're changing these providers, you, you, know, you don't break the flows and you can actually switch with just a simple line of code. Take the example again from search. You can switch from Mongolia to MilliSearch by changing a single line of code. And when you spin up your application, it'll be just like working with the previous uh, version of your plugins. And this, this of course, is also possible in other areas than just search. Another nice benefit of having strong abstractions is that when we're building our admin dashboard, which sits in front of your Medusa server, we can make it very easy for the merchant to control the providers they're working with. And we also have this multi-regional support baked in. So this means that merchants can have different providers for different markets. And in that sense, you're always able to offer the local heroes that uh, that are relevant to each of the markets that a merchant sells to. Now let's take a closer look at how the plugin architecture actually works. So in Medusa, you can configure your project from the Medusa config file. Here you specify which plugins you want to work with. And for each of these plugins, you can also give options that can configure how each plugin behaves. So take a look at the, this example here, where Stripe and Strapi are configured. The Stripe plugin takes an API key, so that links your, uh, your Medusa instance to your Stripe account. And the Strapi plugin does a similar thing here with the DB credentials. Um, again, providing the functionality of actually syncing, uh, syncing data between the two systems. Each plugin by itself, works by exporting functionality that Medusa can register into the application. So this can be general things uh, like uh, custom API endpoints. It can be custom pieces of business logic. It can be event subscribers, which can be used for notifications, but also for automation flows. It can also be database models that actually uh, migrate the schema of the database. When a plugin uh, exports certain types of, of functionality, uh, namely the abstractions that are available in Medusa, uh, these are things like you know, payment abstractions, it could also be fulfillment abstractions. This will register the custom functionality into the core of Medusa so that at critical points in the business logic, you'll be calling the third-party code instead of something uh, uh, that is part and baked into Medusa. So again, allowing you to get full control of the entire flow of your e-commerce setup. As a final note, you are sometimes in a position where a plugin doesn't exist for the functionality you need, and it might not even make sense to actually make a plugin because it's so specific to your uh, particular instance or store. In this case, we make it possible for you to use the root of your Medusa project uh, in a similar way that a plugin would behave. So you can export the same types of functionalities from the root of your Medusa project. And in that sense, you have, the, again, the full power, the full control of your Medusa instance. Before we wrap up, I want to highlight a plugin to one of the hottest CMS systems out there. Of course, that's Strapi. Um, we have this plugin with Strapi that when installed does a couple of things. So it'll first sync the products, the collections, the regions you have configured in, in your Medusa instance between Strapi and Medusa. So this allows you to enrich your product data with more fields or more, uh, more uh, complex structures. 
and manage your products from Strapi too. Once your products are in Strapi, you can use your data in any storefront and you can basically leverage this fully headless setup. I'm really excited to see these new Strapi Medusa projects coming out there. And I highly encourage that you take a look at our repository and check it out and explore the cool stuff that you can accomplish with Medusa. Thank you so much for listening in and uh, feel free to reach out anytime. You can hit me up on Twitter. Also highly recommend that you check out uh, Medusa's Discord server. That's it for me. Thanks.